Welcome back to the show. Few things are more important than raising teens to be safe, healthy, and responsible adults. Unless your teens are the terrifying kids from the White Lotus, just leave those two alone and pray they don't say something devastating about your elbows. But over the last few decades, one alarming industry has become a powerhouse. In states across the U.S., programs like wilderness therapy and therapeutic boarding schools are part of what is known as the troubled teen industry. The vast and highly profitable network. There are hundreds of these in the United States, ranging from wilderness programs, behavior modification programs, boot camps, therapeutic boarding schools, religious programs, rehabs. They take kids with problems ranging from serious psychiatric disorders, drug abuse, trauma issues, to kids who have difficult family relationships or just aren't performing to their parents' preferences. Not performing to their parents' preferences? What does that even mean? Children aren't f iPhones. You can't put them on airplane mode when you're busy. Each year, some 50,000 kids in the U.S. are sent into residential treatment programs, boarding schools, tough love wilderness programs, and boot camps, often against their will. Kids are sent to these programs by their parents and, strangely, daytime TV. There is a, a program that's called the Wingate Wilderness Program. He's the clinical director at Wilderness Treatment Center, the Center for Discovery. Turnabout Ranch is a terrific place. It specializes in working with teens. You two fight about how this child should be parented, and neither one of you are within a country mile of what needs to happen. Okay, not every phrase needs to be made folksy. We get it. You're just a regular guy who's not at all qualified to be a doctor. But despite the endorsement of hometown buffet Krampus, these facilities are actual physical and psychological nightmares for children. I witnessed and endured physical abuse, restraints, emotional, mental abuse. I was forced onto medications. I was taught that everything that happened to me was all my fault. I had to do forced labor outside in below freezing temperatures and sleep on a wooden plank with no pillow. The family of a boy who died in a car accident at the ranch says he had jalapeno pepper juice poured into his eyes and that he was carried from a pole bound by hands and feet like one would carry a large dead animal. I had just turned 13 years old. They did a full intake cavity search. They had a supervised shower, which was also very traumatizing. That is truly horrifying. Those facilities aren't using tough love to help teens grow. Those are businesses that are abusing children to make a profit. The U.S. Government Accountability Office found thousands of allegations of abuse in the troubled teen industry, yet there are no federal laws or agencies regulating the centers. It's the kind of lax childcare that led to Yakka, Wacko, and Dot being locked in the Warner Brothers Tower. They tried to tell us how bad it was in their theme song, but no one listened. For decades, governments were incentivized to apply lax regulations because these programs generate hundreds of millions of dollars every year. In 2015, Utah reported that it brought in $328 million from its troubled teen programs, and the industry accounted for more than 6,000 jobs. And I get that Utah needs the money. Big Love merchandise is still the number two source of income in the state. Programs like Provo Canyon have been referred to as if hell itself was on Earth. But when marketing to parents, these programs make hell seem like a really refreshing hike. One brochure that we received in the mail uh, had a picture of um, mountains, a snow-capped mountain with a beautiful, a pristine lake, um, a lot of pine trees. The pictures look great. You see this vast wilderness, you see the kids around a campfire. Come to find out later that you know, high impact is really a horse corral butted up against a dog kennel. And kids mar what, march in a circle inside a horse corral. That is appalling. I mean, yes, we need to teach children that life is an endless slog of going in circles until you die, but there are more humane ways to do it. Many facilities are ill-equipped to care for children at all, let alone provide the psychological support needed to help children with mental health needs. In fact, many of these programs don't employ licensed staff or supervising physicians. So not only are some kids sent there by Dr. Phil, they have to be treated by Dr. Phil's. Still, troubled teen programs continue to stay in business because they prey on desperate parents. The parent wants so badly for the kid to be okay. And they're offered this solution that not only alleviates the kind of stress and, um, and pain that they're experiencing in their own lives, but gives the promise that their kid is going to be okay, that maybe they'll come home 
better and obedient and healthy. Programs also use tactics to scare already worried parents, warning them that if they don't enroll their kids, their child will end up in jail or dead. That is a parent's biggest fear. The second biggest, of course, is that their kid will grow up to be a professional juggler. Due to the stigma surrounding the issues that cause parents to seek help, Americans are about as aware of these abuses as they are that Canada made their own version of the Matrix. The plot's mostly the same, but instead of taking place in a simulation, it takes place in a moose. Furthermore, once a child has enrolled, many facilities restrict communication with their parents, making it difficult for a child to even report abuse. The whole program is based off of a break you down to build you back up mentality. Any time they broke a rule, big or small, former students say they were punished, forced to be silent, or put in isolation, sometimes for months. They did rape reenactments on, on the girls that had been sexually abused before the program, and they would have a male staff come in and reenact the rape on the victim. And while that was happening, we were instructed to yell things at her like whore, slut. It effectively breaks you. You lose your sanity, you lose hope. You know what, forget reform. We should just burn that place to the ground. Like, if you're confused how these camps have operated largely unchecked for so long, you are not alone. Inconsistent rules across states, including licensing, employee certification requirements, and how the programs identify, makes government oversight of the industry a challenge. No license is required, no oversight is needed, and no training is mandated. The state simply does not keep track of them. Anyone could buy a piece of property here, put together a website, and start charging parents several thousand dollars a month to send them their troubled kids. So basically, the only requirement to run one of these camps has been a GeoCities account. During the past several years, we've become more aware of industry abuses, thanks to both lawsuits brought by former residents, as well as celebrities who've gone public to describe the trauma they've faced. In her documentary last year, Paris Hilton discussed being taken from her home in the middle of the night, making her think she was literally being kidnapped by strangers and sent to a troubled teen program against her will. Earlier this year, she testified before the Utah State Legislature about the abuses she experienced, and in March, the state passed a new law increasing oversight. As of 2015, at least 86 kids have died in these programs. And yet, since 2008, Congress has repeatedly failed to advance a federal bill on the issue. Last month in Washington, Paris joined Senator Jeff Merkley and Representatives Ro Khanna, Rosa DeLauro, and Adam Schiff to advocate for the Accountability for Congregate Care Act. The act would help make it easier to hold teen facilities accountable and hopefully better protect kids. We need to pass this legislation now because every kid deserves to be cared for, to feel safe, and to never, ever have to go on television with Dr. Phil. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, like and subscribe. If you'd like to hear some opinions from a man in a lifted truck, leave YouTube on autoplay.